with another healthy dose of your favorite podcast, Lucky Time Explosion! Wow! Happy April Fools, everybody. We have a special guest today. Rodney Sannon. I'm, I'm special. You're Thank special. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's, but tell people what you do. So Ronnie's a comic book artist, an illustrator. Yes. Yeah. I'm a, I like to say cartoonist mm. because I do anything from comics to storyboards to children's books. Right. And lately I've been doing a lot more children's books. I've been getting into that industry. Mm. So yeah. Um, cartoonist is the best. Mm. Um, I mean, I could say illustrator too, because, you know, I do a lot of, um, portraits for people, caricatures, you know, right. commissions here and there. So I'm an illustrator, and, you know, when you step back, but I'm a cartoonist. I like, yeah, I guess I like a, sequential art. Sequential yes. art. Yes. It's got to be in sequence. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I guess I think about it because um, I was thinking about your backstory, you know, about how, um, tell people about like, you know, your, your story. You were in, raised in Haiti? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was raised in Haiti, even though I was born here. Mm. Because my parents didn't trust here. Uh, yeah, why not? You know. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess fair. I mean, yeah. I mean, for, it's for a lot of reasons. My parents sent me and my older brother um, to be raised in Haiti. Mm. Um, and all the way up to seventh grade. Yeah. Seventh grade, I came here to the United States. And then you were you were reading a bunch of comics though when you were in Haiti, oh. and then you got to come here and study with some of those. Actually, people. I was doing some room cleaning like a uh, long. Let me see. Before COVID, I was mm. like cleaning my room, and I found. I I want to say my first comic, oh. and like from Haiti, like I came with it. It was I don't know if you had these here, but I know you had Mickey Mouse comics but it was called mickey parade mickey parade yes hmm you guys had it had it here like it like it sounds familiar but i don't i'm not recalling a mickey parade yes it was all these like disney comic books about the you know mickey mouse and all that and i had them they were all in french i used to read you know tintin oh yeah i love um, tintin yeah. actually tintin, tintin was great. every young people young person in haiti used to read tintin wow. really um, okay yeah. interesting that ed and, grimly looking little dude <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I watched um because I haven't read them in so long. I watched a video, like a retrospective on it. Mm. I, I think I had the whole collection, but I don't know where they are now. But I wow. had the whole collection. Damn. Very impressive. And, and French and everything. That's awesome. Um, you've been dialing, you've been dealing a little bit in some, I guess would be fine art. We did, we did a sale for you not that long ago. Yes, yes. You know, we sold a piece. Uh, yeah, because I... I because even when, because I remember when I asked somebody, like it was back in Haiti, about some of the Marvel books. Because mm. Marvel did, um, they did some books in French. Right. Um, ah, translated them. That. Yeah, they translated them. But um, some of the books were, like, I was like, how do they color them? Like, you know, so much detail and stuff. And they, some of them use watercolor and everything. And so, yeah, I remember when I went to school and I asked the art teacher, about watercolor and stuff but i always like watercolor mm. um when i came to the united states like i went to sva um mm, school, of school. Arts. and yeah i took watercolor classes because I, I always like watercolor so yeah the piece i i sold here was one of my latest watercolor works yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful yeah. piece at that Thank it was you. good you know I, the guy who uh, bought it told me because uh, for viewers who didn't see it or you know don't see this picture up on the green screen here it's like a depiction of kind of like um like a, a god figure yeah, right a, like he's a mischief a party god yeah he's a haitian kind of party god but also the the spirit of of death that not spirit of death but it takes you after you die it takes you uh -huh. and he's holding something right he's yeah drinking? he's holding his, yeah he's holding his bottle oh you yeah know, he comes you know the buyer told right. me that it's uh hung up over his bar Nice. When he gets yeah. home from so work. He, he brings <laughs> nice. you to where you got to go. But, yeah. you know, when the traveling first begins, he's like, take a swig of this shit. Yeah. So we're going right. to get real tweaked on the way there. So you better take a big gulp of this shit. And I'm not even true. telling you what it is. You just got to drink it. That's true. Has anybody ever done that to you? Take a drink of this, sip this, you know, and I can't tell you what it is? No, I would never do that. <laughs> 
I did have somebody, the, the closest ever? to that was a friend of mine who goes, try my homemade wine or a moonshine. He had made moonshine out of red wine and turned right. it into moonshine and oh, called man. it his love shine. And his it was, love shine. Goes, try my love shine. And it was the, disgusting. It was like nail polish. I, I had a similar situation where his guy's like, here's my homemade milk, but he had no cows. <laughs> So I was like, I, I don't know if I really want anything to do with this glass. But did, but did he add almonds? He had <laughs> almonds to, to, you know, throw down after the milk. <laughs> the but it milk. was like a, you know, it, it just it didn't look you're right. You're just trying to get a record for how many times you're going to say man milk on this show, aren't you? It's, it's, it's a, man. You know, Baby Mank, man I'm, I'm, milk. I'm bringing the man milk back. Yikes. Well, from, wh- like from, a- from where I don't know, but. I'm bringing it back. That sounds like a high, a high art concept, you know, a really high end art concept. Wait, I've never had moonshine, or at least I no? don't think so. It's just like, basically it, clear so it, liquor. Oh, okay. Very I was about to ask, is it more like beer or is it more like no, rum? No, strong. It's, right? it's like it's clear. as strong as you can oh, basically, okay. basically get. ever clear. It's like liquid. It's just like clear, pure alcohol, you know, pretty much. I was okay. reading that they were doing. I forgot where this NASCAR racing. Uh, stadium, yeah. and they found like this secret door that led to like a moonshine factory underneath <laughs> this NASCAR. Awesome. And I think I forgot the guy's name, but someone that used to race had like was involved with creating moonshine. So well, they, they used to do it in the tunnel where that train is in Atlantic and Pacific. There's like this old tunnel that was the part of the oldest subway system. And then they hired the Masons to demolish it. And instead of demolishing it, they just um, put a wall up and we're like, okay, we're good. Prob- it was probably for, you know, back in the days where yeah. it was illegal. And then they just Yeah, it was prohibition. It was so they did that. They made the wall and then they just set up shop. And then just, no, they left and they le- abandoned it. And then somebody oh, moved in and was like making uh, liquor I down see. there during prohibition, which is pretty cool. <laughs> There's also a train down there which supposedly has some letter from Abraham Lincoln on it still that has never been discovered. But whatever, we'll see. We uh, should go spurlunking. Spelunking. I love urban spelunking. Mm. That's a thing. <laughs> There's nothing more than I like than but, yeah. spelunking. Speaking of our sales here, we've been doing all right. We've been making sales. We've been doing shows. Meanwhile, though, the more proper art market is in a free fall currently. So that's the art news of the day. Why is this happening? <laughs> Could you <laughs> tell everybody? Because I'm feeling very upset about this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm Should I just give out. up? So I was trying to figure it out too, you know, um, you know, Rodney, we're, we're both in different worlds as far as like what is happening right now in the art market is relate is yeah, different countries in art planet. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, it's affecting the high end market right now. Right. So you've got a a big reduction, I think like 50% reduction in like works listed or something going on. And I'm trying to figure this out because I'm going, well, why would the market be in a free fall? Everything else is doing poorly. And usually like the fine art market and the gold market are two things that perform well in economic downturns because people are trying to reinvest and trying to like squirrel their money in a way into assets that won't depreciate. So I had me thinking like, why is the art market doing so badly when everything else is doing badly? And I think I was like, does this mean things are going good? Like the art market's tanking? Does it mean we're on road for economic recovery? I could tell you as Morgan Lapp and it doesn't seem that way, but continue. (laughs) No, I, I was starting to figure out, and I finally figured it out. I was reading some article. They were like, yeah, a lot of people are not listing their works for sale because they uh, are expecting prices to go up. So they're holding on. This is one of the reasons that we're in such a big downturn. People don't want to sell work of famous artists because they're expecting oh. the price to jump to up so, pretty so soon. So this has nothing to do with emerging artist sales. This is yeah, I was too, about to ask, is it too artists completely... that want to, don't want to sell their work or is it just... No, like, like the, the people, high end, yeah, like the, the secondary end, market. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. People right. who are selling their collections, like people who have hoarded Warhols or, you know, bought a bunch of key tearing. They're just not bringing them to market right now because they're expecting prices to jump, which I think is good news, hopefully, meaning that they're expecting things to get better for everyone else. You know what? Maybe that's it's a good time for emerging artists now, then. It's always Since... a good time for emerging artists. Yeah. One of the things that bothers me about the fine art world is how closed and self-referential it is and you know how difficult <laughs> it is to get into that vein of, of, of looking at new work. It's like, I'm so sick of hearing about Basquiat and Warhol. <laughs> you know, it's like, and I have a tattoo. I have like a freaking Basquiat tattoo. <laughs> And people are like, oh, I love Bosque. I'm like, yeah, okay. I could <laughs> never hear his name again right now. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be good, even though I'm a yeah, huge you fan. See, you see it every day. Yeah, exactly. Every day I have to be reminded. 
Wait, is it on your arm? Or? No, it's right here. It's on my wrist. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the only tattoo I have, actually. Which is funny, because you would think that, you know, uh, the tattoo artist wasn't going to do it, because they have a rule against tattooing your hands or your face or your neck on your first tattoo. And you're, if you're not already covered in tattoo, most shops are going to turn you away and say, you know, mm. if you're totally covered in tattoos, they'll do your face, they'll do whatever. But if it's your first one, especially. So they were like, you know, this is going to close some doors for you if you do this. It's called the job hmm. stopper. And I was like, okay, do it, man. Let's do it. Let's ensure I can be unemployed. But yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on. But is it like a timing thing or like, are they you know, waiting after election or the, you know, yeah, that's like a good what question. exactly? What's the event that's going right. to, what's going to bring them back up? What are they anticipating? I don't know. Some, some like real lizard stuff. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> not my chair, not my problem. No, I do. <laughs> if you want to know, but I think we're getting ready to see some new faces in the art, in that higher end art world or for that system to come crashing down entirely. You know, it's, it's going to be tough though. Cause it's one of the, it's really entrenched and it's, I was watching this big thing on it yesterday about the reason why, uh, it is the way it is. And a lot of it has to do with it just being not regulated. And, you know, this leads to corruption. It's just going to happen. <laughs> and that's the way it's been for so long. So. What's your what's your most prized art possession? Oh, God. Like, probably my Charlie Cunningham. Mm -hmm. I have this painting from an artist named Charlie Cunningham, who's a, a really talented sculptor. But I discovered when he was uh, still just drawing and painting. And then... Uh, Back in the day when he, Rodney was part of the con artist back in the day too, you were hanging out on Ludlow yep. <laughs> and he brought, um, he brought the piece by after a show and just like gave it to me. And uh, cause I'd been trying to buy it for him for years. And I was like, I was like, I can't afford it, but I want to give you a little bit of money now or whatever. Mm. Get it, get it. Wow. And then we started working together and just, uh, he just pulled it out of his car one day and was like, here, I just want you to have this. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? Wow. I was so excited. So yeah, if my house burns down, I'm probably going to pull this painting out first. <laughs> it's like an oil painting of like a hipster, like nice. hip, a hipster portrait. <laughs> that but, is yeah. cool. That's what cool. do you think about as a comic book artist, Rodney? What do you think about the fine art world? Like you're around it, you um, go to parties with us. I mean, they were like going to SVA. Like they were, we were thought that. Well, not. Well, I wouldn't say that. I'll be, I'll be nice to the teachers. The teachers did tell us, warned us about the low art, high art kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. And but I had a couple of teachers who told me that you know don't be afraid to like expand your horizons like to just to go to shows and um just get ideas and right. that's how i started really because i i never you know did the gallery thing pretty much i'll say until like senior year mm. in college like way back in 2000 2004 right and so um but yeah like i i discovered um con artists because a friend of mine that i went to sva with like mm. She invited me. She was like, oh, yeah, oh, cool. you, you should come. You know, they they show all kinds of different artists because the idea is, oh, galleries only for a specific type of artists right. that do a specific kind of thing. And so it was a really, really good excuse for me to revive my painting things because I, nice. I stopped because I because I started doing oil painting, too. Oh, yeah. But then I didn't have enough space to, you know, do I, oil I still got to get you real. in the VR painting because <laughs> he's trying to turn me into a robot yeah so, no yeah. i mean he's eventually eventually not, you're not yeah. gonna have a choice rob uh, they're uh, gonna come for us I'm, it's I'm not fighting. gonna it's not him it's gonna be the robots themselves i'm fighting the good fight i'm fighting the good fight. <laughs> staying analog mm -hmm. right no i just didn't have the room to like yeah. you know I'll, I'll choke on like all kind of smells and like, <laughs> i couldn't do oil painting anymore so ventilation is important yeah and i just you know do some of my watercolor and then i joined started you know showing my work yeah and yeah like i got used to like you know seeing more. yeah and, and it just makes my work whether it be commercial work or my own stuff better so yeah oh and uh, a little quick uh, promo buy this hippo pen look at this hippo <laughs> pen holy ronnie shit. made this pen it's a yes. sick ass hippo you should buy a pen you should buy a pen i yeah. want 20 of them <laughs> Yeah, my my so hippo does being scratched. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's like a tough street hippo. Yeah. People will know you're not to be messed with if you're mm. wearing this hippo pen. 
But my, my background into art, my Fourier into art was kind of, I guess, similar in a way where it was back in the Bay Area when I decided I wanted to do art at all. I had been like mm -hmm. a music major and then I changed my major to fine art and I started like looking at paintings. I got really into something called um, fecal face. Do you remember this? You you mentioned this. I once. mentioned this before. R remind me about this fecal face. Fecal face mm -hmm. was like, and it was kind of a con artist vibe because there was a lot of street artists, a lot of like skaters who were doing work, really kind of like punky, kind of. Uh, it was borderline street art, but it and wasn't. Where really. was it based? San Francisco. So it was, um, yeah. a lot of artists uh, who were affiliated with this gallery were uh, put into something called the Mission School, which was the Mission District of San Francisco. It was a lot of like skaters and. Uh, a lot of kind of Barry McGee came out of there, uh, graffiti artists, really well known. Uh, a few other ones, Chris Cunningham, I think also, uh, if I'm getting his name right. But yeah, it was a cool like kind of community vibe and it had similar similar feel to it. And they they were like a whole story where they started with a website, then they got a gallery, a show, their first show. They totally sold out their first gallery show. It started going bigger. They got an office. They ended up getting a gallery. And then once they got the gallery, I think things started to dwindle. Because <laughs> like they, they started, I think they probably started losing money. They were going really strong, but they, they really tried to open a commercial gallery. And then they just kind of slowly fell apart and disappeared over the years. But I think the website's still there, if you go check it out. Maybe not. It's a scratch and sniff website. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that is the funny thing because now those a lot of those artists that you see that were kind of considered outsiders are now in like the MoMA. Oh wow, that's so, pretty awesome. Yeah, I'll go by there and be like, oh, this is like a punk rock, you know, the fecal face artist, and now they're now they're here in the MoMA. No, I love <laughs> fecal oh, face. That's one of my. I mean, those artists. other kind of artists like they they're more respected now. Like it's not the same as it used to be. You know. Yeah. What do you think's changed? I mean, I, I feel like, at least from the comic book side, I just think that comic books are cool now and mm. they make money now. <laughs> well, the movies so do. Exactly. Like that, I think that's a big part of it. Like now there's a lot more respect for either comic book artists and, yeah. you know, the comic book stories. Like people are just discovering like, amazing stories that were told in comic books. Like there was, this, there was this whole discussion about like there's gonna be a new crow movie right uh, people doesn't were like look good you wouldn't believe how many people don't know like no it was it wasn't just a movie it was based on a comic book of course yeah and the movie how as great as the movie was like it left out a lot from the comics yeah you know like so there's just you know what how yeah, do you it feel looks kinda, it looks how like an action yeah. movie you know? how do you feel about like um the rise of manga and like indie comics and graphic novels because i feel like the classic uh american comic book is is suffering right now like I, I read something that blew my mind it said that um one piece the manga for one piece like yep. outsold the entire comic books industry Correct. like every american comic book was Correct. outsold by one manga from not Japan. surprising <laughs> like it's manga like manga basically is running circles around american comics it's a uh, i think when you say American comics, yeah. meaning just DC and Marvel, like I, the I get image the, too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, image, image has a better image. Image has a better I mean. image now. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's just it's the format of the superhero comic that right. I think it's like they just don't want to change. Right. Um, there has been some changes, like they they've been experimenting with like different artists, and you know. It's just that, yeah, their format is so weird. Like you would walk in and there will be so many different stories and so many different books. And if you pick up this book, some of the story might be in this book. You might not know. And they do a bad job of referencing it. Like people right. complain about this all the time. Whereas a manga, like just follow that one one piece manga from There's like not book 17 one to superman from right. book one to book 100 or whatever like you know right. like so and that's how most of these stories are so it's straightforward it know? reminds me of the superman when superman died right when they killed off superman they brought uh, like my a dad million bought, different my dad probably superman books. oh yeah bought like 50 of those black 
plastic bag. Does it still yep. happen? Oh, yeah. I, I forgot. I, I don't think so. No. Oh, and man. I think inside there was like an armband. It came with a few perks. But like, yeah, people. But they also made a ton of those comics. There they, they was such a, yeah. you know. Kind they were pumping the those out. Do you have totally a favorite alternative it. Superman? Which one would be? Alternative Superman. Like one of the one of the ones that came out after the the death issue. Remember, there's there like was the so universe. Many. Yeah, Superman. there was. I mean, or a favorite uh, like comic arc. Yeah, who's your who's watch. your favorite character over the years? Oh wow, one of your well, favorite. That's a tough one, one, right? Just one of them. It's a tough question. Right. Well, I just popped out of my mind about the Superman. One of my favorite Superman um, stories is All Star Superman. Um, it's a great story. I think it got what. Superman is about. Isn't that really, the, really well. what we're talking about? The All Star Superman? Isn't that all these Superman who came after the death or is it, something else? No, it was yeah, it was something else. Uh. Um it was like well, I'm not gonna give up the story, but pretty much um Lex Luthor almost pretty much got um Superman. But uh. like he's kind of learning what it takes to be Superman. It's, it's a really good story. Nice. Um nice. but um my favorite comic book superhero character. Um, it's easy for me to say, like, I was always mostly a X-Men fan. Mm, yeah. Like, I always liked the X-Men. Wolverine like, fan? Um, yeah, all of them. Like, all of them? Um, Wolverine obviously was the easiest one to pick, but there were so many X-Men throughout the ages. Like, so many people join the team and leave the team this or whatever. Is, this yeah. is true. Um, it was always Beast for me. I like yeah. the, I like the, the dichotomy of, like, him being, like, Frasier. And I had a like really little, little yeah. sweater vest and that looking like a That was a great big... casting, by the way. He is kind of like a Frasier. Like, he's yeah. a giant beast. Like, he, he's going to kill you. But no, he's, he's a My nice guy. My first, like, yeah. favorite superhero was, like, really shitty. Yeah? The worst one? I don't know why I liked them. So, for some reason, I like Excalibur. Which like Excalibur. No one a gave a sh- oh, They were basically right? a yeah. bunch of people who were like not as cool as any of the other groups. Are you saying British UK. people are not cool? No, I love <laughs> British people. But the thing is this. Oh, it might. <laughs> Captain Britain, because I used to play Marvel role-playing. Mm-hmm. So you what? learn about a lot of the backgrounds and weaknesses and, and specifics right. about the character. Captain Britain... If he leaves the UK, he immediately becomes depressed and starts drinking. <laughs> and it affects his role play if he's outside of the UK. Yep. That's funny. Because like that usually a- <laughs> I thought I think they do a lot of drinking in the UK. <laughs> the Brits can drink, my guy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Once he leaves, it's not the same. You know, Budweiser here or shit. He's probably like, bah! you know. So I switched yeah. it up. I eventually was like, I gotta leave this guy because like forget about it. Like so then, my, my favorite is Lobo. Lobo. Uh, Lobo. Lobo was tight. He's, he's the man. And it, I don't know if anybody, if you like Lobo and you don't know about the paramilitary special where he <laughs> fights Santa Claus, you know that one? Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. not going to ruin that because that's one of the best comic books <laughs> ever. And are you a fan of Simon Bisley? He does a lot um, of like heavy metal paint, like the oh, comic I book see. Uh, yeah, paintings. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. did a lot of... Mm-hmm. Man, that guy is unbelievable. He blows my. Yeah, head. he's one he's of my, great my my favorite artists. But um, Lobo, I keep on getting excited because the news has been swirling around for quite a while oh, now the movie. that Jason, Jason Momoa, Momoa is leaving Aquaman to do Lobo. And and let's face it, man, he looks exactly like <laughs> Lobo. He does actually look like Lobo. And <laughs> bringing back the the crow, I don't know if anybody knew this, but they did a few test shots for him to be the crow. Really? Back in the day, and I mean. You know the shape of his face. Wait, his how hair. does he look back? In, I don't know if I know he how looks, he looks like back in the day. Dude, he did. basically looked like uh, Brandon Lee on steroids. On like steroids. The same face, like it's him. So he didn't oh. look like that commercial where he peels off his muscles. You seen that one? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There's, like no. AI, there's a commercial where it's like he's getting ready for a day at home, and like they use you know it's special like, yeah. effects, and he like just relax. He just takes like, off a whole <laughs> muscle suit, and he's like no, a skinny dude. He's I like need a to see guy. that. Yeah, that cracks commercial. me up. <laughs> It's funny, I was, I was going through uh, YouTube, um, and you don't know what's real and what's not anymore, because like, <laughs> they know how to get away with putting like, so I see this ad, Will Smith is Popeye. What? I'm like, shut the fuck up, this is, I don't believe that. this is crazy. So I put on the trailer, it's got like the Paramount logo, it looks really official, but it's like the darkest version of Popeye, like it looks like 
I don't know, evil shit, but you don't see anybody. There's no people within the whole trailer. Was it like, like a super cut of like iRobot made to be yeah, like Yeah, just a bunch of I, AI, you know, video and images. But, and I had to do some research. I'm like, is this just like some weird teaser, you know, whatever, and, and it's fake. Yeah. You know, if you look at the information on YouTube for that video, in between the lines, it will say parody. Right. Bop, bop, bop. But it shows like Will Smith is Popeye with the <laughs> pipe and shit. And I'm like, you know That's what? That's I mean, it I might was like, work. That I don't cool. Know. No, I was like, I'll take this. I'll take Will Smith might, as yeah. fucking Popeye. But it was really funny because I, I knew afterwards, like, and it, and it started off with, I kid you not, <clears throat> in a world. So I was like, <laughs> yo, this shit's fake. <laughs> Forget it, man. It I would, shows I would him, like, okay sailing with, um, through Popeye. evil rivers. And I would be okay with Will Smith Popeye if, if yeah. Will really commits to the voice. Oh, he'd be, see, he yeah. wouldn't be yeah. punching anybody in that movie. He'd just be bitch lapping everybody in the face. It'd be <laughs> I, a whole well, new until, type of Popeye. Until, <laughs> until he gets uh, spinach. <laughs> right. So Got that's that Robin right. Williams Popeye movie. That was, yeah, I, I don't even remember it, actually. It's I like remember a fever the dream. image. Yeah, it I is just, like a fever dream. I don't even remember it. <laughs> I, I, I remember, Shelley, him, pl- I remember him playing it, yes, but I don't remember the movie at all. I, I just remember, I think I've seen it like seven times probably, and I barely remember the plot. <laughs> Even though I've seen well, it so it's many the times. typical like you know, uh, Bluto is a piece of shit. It's got and... such a style to it that I swear I remember it having like a what? smell, even though it's a movie. You can't. When is the when is the trademark art? Oh. <laughs> what? When is the the, the trademark pop- for Popeye? Yeah, pretty soon. It's I been bet. out. It's been for a while. I bet. I bet pretty soon it's gonna come up. <laughs> you could smell Popeye from a million miles away, yeah. man. Fish you know what I mean? Sweat. I don't know how to explain sea it. It's salt. got like a sepia tone to the movie. <laughs> You know, everything looks like it's like a war. It's it got was? a green. It's not, it's not sepia tone, literally, end, but the whole mm-hmm. thing looks very kind of He He fights yellow. the big rubber octopus. Right, right, right. And right. Harry Nielsen, we were talking about the Harry Nielsen and uh, Randy Newman did the soundtrack. Right, right, right. I do love Randy Newman. Man, I don't, yeah. remember, I don't remember the movie at all. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to go watch that. I but, have to remind uh, myself. We only who, have a couple minutes left. Yeah. Rodney, what's up? Is there anything you, uh, you can plug? Do you have like a new book coming out we could be check out? Oh, man. Um, Show children's you books, in? children's books, children's books. What's your latest right. work? Sure. Oh, okay. So I guess you can show. We'll put it up well, here. Oh, okay. Um, I did a, a bilingual book. Um, Ooh. it's in Creole and English, so kids can learn Creole, like young kids. Nice. Yeah, young kids can learn new languages very, very quickly. So how many languages do you speak? I speak. You're a polyglot. I'll say I speak two and a half. Nice. I, it used to be three, but my French is out of practice. Mm. Like I understand French, mm-hmm. but I don't. I don't meet people that speak french that much there's a lot of french people here french french people? french french people in new york um, totally yeah. i think it's the places i go to eat because i have a, probably i have a, i'm obsessed with the uh jam bone the, what the uh, hell is the jam bone jambon 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 that a sounds pork. like michael it's, jackie it's shaman it's a ham <laughs> yeah shaman shaman it's, it's a pork sandwich. <laughs> it's good. It's delicious ham sandwich. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotta go speak to some French people. They're they're out there in the restaurants. I'm getting yeah. hungry, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have that book out. Um, um, I have a new book coming out. Um, Ooh. it's about flying kites in the Caribbean. That's, and that's so it's nice. a very colorful book. Um, I might show you a preview of it. Um, cool. Just to put up here, but nice. um. And um, I posted a small little video about it on TikTok, which I barely post on. Um, but I will. Well, you I heard promise. it here. Go follow Rodney on his TikTok and yes. follow Lucky Time Explosion on their TikTok too. Yes, yes. Don't follow Rodney this. on TikTok, follow yeah. Rodney on Instagram, Instagram yeah. which is Rodney SSSS. We'll be dropping those links in the description. Click below. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll see y'all tomorrow or wednesday rather yeah day after tomorrow. april fools i'm not gonna be here tomorrow all right <laughs> april fools we don't exist thank you for listening to lucky time explosion watch the video edition on patreon a green screen extravaganza experience available exclusively to official lucky timers this episode was recorded at sola studios in manhattan new york helping artists make cool shit since 2016.